the AVIC mission. Two, one. Welcome back to our channel, Machinery and Technology. Today we have a truly electrifying topic, rocket production process. Rockets are of the paramount importance in today's world for a variety of reasons. Their significance can be understood from several perspectives, including scientific, technological, and practical applications. So if you are ready to spark your curiosity, let's dive right in. Vulcan Center production begins with aluminum sheets expertly machined to remove more than a two-third of the weight, resulting in a structurally strong yet lightweight ortho-grade panels that form Vulcan's propellant tanks. The panels are then bump pressed to form the curves required to complete aluminum domes panels, and other structures that form Vulcan's propellant tanks are first cleaned and are attached to a smooth even surface and then anodized to harden and prevent corrosion following an ultrasonic inspection five completed panels. For the liquid nadon tank are assembled and joined together using friction steer welding and like traditional welding, where filter material is used to join components. Friction stir welding uses a head to stir the metal of the two panels together as it moves down the seam. The resulting joint is stronger and produces a lighter weight, higher performing tank. The processes are repeated to create a liquid oxygen lock stack, followed by attaching domes to complete the tanks. Friction stir welding is then used to join the two propellant tanks, then compromised and wall can booster. And production continues on the booster stage stretch forming gore panels for the center. Second stage propellant tanks is underway, the stainless steel. Gore panels are welded together to create a propellant tanks dome. The gore welder is one of the several highly specialized welding stations in the center. Production process just down the aisle. Century 5th's massive intermediate bucklehead is a matted to the ultra thin tank. Once both propellant tanks are welded, they are matted together to create a Century 5 second stage. Before moving to the final assembly, the 5.4 meter booster welds are sprayed with a foam insulation, followed by booster mask and paint with the four engines are individually hot fired prior to making their way to the factory. They are then made into the Vulcan's dust structure and protected by heat shield with production complete. Manufacturing rocket components requires consideration of a lot of criteria. Not only is lightweight construction essential, Materials must also withstand extremely high stress and temperatures. Additional manufacturing costs for these complex geometrics are very high when limited to the production and conventional manufacturing process. The engine consists of a thrust chamber, the core element of a liquid propellant engine, with a combustion chamber wall, fuel inlet, and injections head with an oxidant inlet. Chemical reaction in a combustion chamber creates a gas that expands due to the heat development and is then ejected with enormous force. 
The truss required to drive the rocket is therefore creating using recoil. Extremely high temperatures created in the chamber during combustion require the wall to be cooled to prevent it from burning. To achieve this, the liquid fuel is fed up for through cooling duct in a combustion chamber will therefore enter into the injection head. There the fuel mixes with oxygen and it's lit by a spark plug. It's conventional construction. The cooling ducts are constructed in a blank and a subsequently sailed through multiple working steps. With selective laser melting, the cooling is integrated as a part of the design and created with a chamber is one on process. Because of the engine's complexity, traditional manufacturing process are cost intensive and require half a year minimum. But with the additive manufacturing, this component is built in a fewer than five four days. Despite its complex structure, post-processing is minimized, avoiding high level of the tool wear. Selective laser melting offers aerospace companies the opportunity to increase their competitive position by increasing rocket system functionality, while maintaining exceptional quality, as well as a light weighting and drastically reducing development, testing and production timeframes. It's important to know that rocket manufacturing is a highly regulated and a safety critical process. To the inherited risk associated with a spaceflight, strict quality control, testing and safety measures are essential to ensure the success of rocket missions and the safety of both the spacecraft and any person involved. Additionally, advanced in the material manufacturing techniques continue to drive improvements in rocket design and performance.
Let's watch technicians weld rocket stage adapter for the first crew at Temis flight. The video shows engineer of NASA Marshall Space Fly Center in Huntersville, Alabama, completing the welds to form the launch vehicle stage adapter. The launch vehicle stage adapter in this video will fly to Artemis II, the first crewed missions of the NASA Artemis program. Upon stacking the upper and the lower cones, technicians in advanced robotic tooling and innovating process called friction steer welding to join the cones on the LAVAS to form one structure. The next step in the manufacturing process is the installation of the pneumatically actuated pharyngeal joint which sits atop the LBSA and helps separate the core stage and LBSA from the interning to ready propulsion stage during flight. After the core stage launches the rocket, the ICPS provides the power to send the Orion spacecraft into the crew to the moon.